Pip Pip, Tony Ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts about this city. And people often say to me, Julesy, oh Julesy, just where should I go for afternoon tea? Well, today we're going to go to the Langham. Because when we opened in 1865, you know, we were the most luxurious, most grand hotel in the whole of Europe. So, of course, if you were part of the literati, then this was the place to be seen, which, of course, it still is. Of course. Well, why, why do you think uh, we are here ourselves? I hope you enjoy your afternoon tea today. So we have quite a few different types of tea. We have a regular afternoon tea, so you go to with sandwiches, scones and pastries. And then we also have our option of high tea. There's so many different types of tea. There's high tea, low tea, Mr. Tea. <laughs> afternoon tea. So I've given you our Langham blend. It's a blend of Assam, which is a morning tea, your classic English breakfast. Ceylon, which is a lovely decaf, um, subtle tea, evening tea. And then you have Darjeeling, which is a very, very nice afternoon tea. It's not as high in caffeine as light golden brown in colour. I've noticed that Eva has poured in the tea first into the cup. It's no, because we that. use bone china. And this, in, in particular, this is Wedgwood bone china that was created for us with a, a Langham pink rose. But the quality of the china reflects the temperature that it can withstand. So if you have slightly poorer quality crocs, then you have to put the milk in first so that your tea is a little bit cooler when it fills up the cup. But if you have really high quality china, then you can put the tea in first. So this is high quality? Of course, okay, cool. of course. And what if you just drink it out of a, like a Smarties mug that you got free with an Easter egg? Then <laughs> I you're remember free those. to do whatever you like. <laughs> Boiling hot straight onto my tea bag. It's the Sports Direct <laughs> mug, you got one of those. <laughs> We offer different changes in our sandwiches throughout the season. So we change our sandwiches every two weeks. Uh, we change our pastries every two weeks also as well. Oh, wow! So at the top we have some very, very nice uh, rye bread. It's coming with some beef pastrami. That's a celeriac remoulade. So remoulade is a lifestyle French mayonnaise. After that, a new beetroot bread with John Ross smoked salmon. And that's with some horseradish mayonnaise, cream cheese, cucumber and chives. And then you have a beautiful brioche bun with egg mayonnaise. And that's coming with some asparagus from Kent. That's, that, that lot will do me. Don't know what you're going to have, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> this, traditionally, what we're having here is actually afternoon tea. A lot of people talk about high tea, but I think that was called high tea because it was served on a higher table. But afternoon tea is the traditional one, made famous, of course, by the Duchess of Bedford, who was a lady-in-waiting to Queen Victoria. So there's a great famous quote where she said she had a sinking feeling in the middle of the afternoon. I know it myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so between lunch and dinner, so she decided she needed a mid-afternoon snack. And so the aristocracy sort of popularised this tradition of having something in the middle of the afternoon. And when we opened, we were the first hotel to actually put that mid-afternoon tea mm. on the menu. So this is the original place to come for afternoon tea, and it's not, I keep saying high tea, and I'm getting confused because oh, when they know. talk about having their tea up north, because I went to Manchester University, and everyone was always <laughs> saying, do you want tea? And I was like, well, a cup of tea? Well, no, it, it's like you know, eight in the evening. And, it, and so they, they say tea to mean dinner. Yeah, absolutely, I'm a northerner. Oh, so yeah. so oh, I would have, I, I'm from Cheshire. Oh, okay. So we would have had our tea, and that would have been our kind of supper, our evening meal. But tea, when we're talking about afternoon tea, is a different, different thing altogether. So it's it's a meal that has three different elements. It has the sandwiches, it has like scones, and then patisserie. Okay. And high tea is when you add a hot course to that meal. So you, you might have poached egg dish or salmon dish or something a little bit sort of more substantial, but hot. This is quite a substantial meal. I'm happy. <laughs> spread your jam and your cream on your scone yes. and then maybe you use this little fork here for your cake. Yes, and did you say scone or did you say scone? <laughs> she said scone, uh, I heard I said her. scone, but do you know what, I don't even know sometimes what I say, it just comes though. out. <laughs> what do you say Kai? Uh, I say, I, I don't know, we'll, like, we'll find out later because okay. <laughs> right. I have to use it naturally in conversation. Okay, though. otherwise I've influenced you. <laughs> scone for me exactly. and I'm so not ashamed. You something too much. You're a scone. He probably says Hoban as well, instead of Holborn. No, I would say Hoban. I, I wouldn't. Really? <laughs> no, because it's from hollow and burn, meaning river in a ditch. Hole, yeah. burn, old this English, see? Hello, Alan. <laughs> How are you? Sorry, I'm being a pedant. <laughs> I'm, from the, uh, I'm from Pedantsville, um, the Republic of Pedantry. Um, yeah, oh, thank you very much. Are you, sir? Bringing them freshly baked from the oven. So you have your plain scones and your fruit scones. 
Excellent. Our jams are also seasonal as well, so what they do is they change them every few weeks. So now we're serving rhubarb from Yorkshire. Oh, nice. uh, and strawberry. The only thing that's not seasoned is the scone. They're in season all year round <laughs> because they're so very, very good. Well said there. He said scone, by the way, just pointing <laughs> that out. Excellent. There's a huge debate about whether you put cream on first or you put jam on first. You cut them in two like this. You do one with cream and jam and then one with jam and cream. <laughs> so let's get this out here. So this is going to be Devonshire clotted cream. Because it's seasonal, I'm going to go for the this rhubarb one, look, that's, that's, that's pretty nice. And then we're gonna try another, doing the cream first. Okay, there we go, right. So look, so this is Devonshire clotted cream, and in Devon, they put the cream first. And in Cornwall, they go for jam first. Now look, the question is, what's easy? Is it easier? Look, that works quite easy, that's nice and easy. Look, there you go, a dollop of jam on top of the cream. Let's see how easy it is now to put cream on top of jam. See, see, look, how am I supposed to spread that? It doesn't even come off, see? So, so the cream first is much easier, no? I think we just proved it scientifically. We need to do um, a few more studies, I think, to be conclusive. Anyway, look, the most important thing is that this is gonna end up in my gob. <laughs> Delicious. How does it compare to Tom Carradine's baking? I'll have to wait wait until I try the scones though, because that was that was his speciality, and I did say scones. You there, did. So. <laughs> Ty has an excellent video on his channel called uh, Weird Side, where he goes to Tom Carradine's house. Come back, Tom Carradine's the guy whose music you can often hear in my videos. And Tom Carradine bakes cakes for you, doesn't he? It's amazing. His weren't red though. That's, that's interesting, a red sandwich. Well, it's different types of bread, you see. It's got all the different types here. Um, oh, hello. Ah, so oh, check these out. Look, these are the ones for the children. So you've got uh, cream cheese, cucumber and chives. Uh, Gouda cheese with some beetroot bread, some British ham and white bread, and then some strawberry jam and brown bread. Now even I can do this jigsaw. <laughs> You're such a slob, honestly. You knew we were coming. You knew we were coming for afternoon nice tea here. I don't need to cool. dress smart. I am. I'm classy on the inside. I don't need to. <laughs> I don't need to dress up. You're quite right, Kai. I mean, it was Oscar Wilde, after all, who said that a gentleman is never rude unintentionally. Ed Miliband famously. <laughs> ruined his whole campaign by eating a bacon sandwich on camera badly. What if I don't eat this sandwich elegantly I'll enough, still vote and then my, <laughs> my, whole, my whole YouTube channel may take a fun one. Mm. I prefer the 68 myself. <laughs> that was excellent. And rhubarb has just come into season. It's uh, grown in sheds with candles. So this rhubarb is much more um, sugary in taste than, and, than your classic rhubarb that grows in the garden, which is more like very starchy and very tough and hard. This is very, very soft. So it's perfect for jam making. Then you have the meline, which is a coconut financier. After that, you have an apple and chamomile uh, sable and mousse. And then you have a wasabi and yuzu uh, chocolate, which is 66% in cocoa and then you have a chocolate leaf wrapped around. Basically, this is just footage of me stuffing food into my face. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> you see, they've printed their name all over the chocolate. No idea how they managed to do that. Technology nowadays is crazy. It's a chocolate printer. Mm. Cheers, Kai. Cheers, Cheers everyone. <laughs> mm. Well, I've got to say that um, I can thoroughly recommend afternoon tea at the Langham. Um, it's just by Oxford Circus Station, opposite the BBC Broadcasting House. I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, if you've enjoyed my film, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And, of course, you can head over to my website, jewelsguys.com, if you want to find out more about me or even book a guided tour or leave a donation or whatever it is. Cheers.